Hi everyone, welcome to the first video for our new project. In this project we're going to be taking a look at facial animation, in particular lip syncing. Lip syncing is the process of animating a character performing lines of dialogue or speaking, or even singing if you were uh, doing some form of um, musical number uh, in your animation. Uh, the system that we're going to be using predominantly with our character for this project is uh, a system called Blend Shapes. Uh, and blend shapes are probably the most rudimentary way of doing uh, facial animation and they can be used for a whole range of other things other than facial animation uh, but basically um, it's a really really good introductory point uh, or an introductory level to facial animation so uh, I've got a pre-rigged character that we're going to take a look at uh, in the, the remainder of this video we're going to have a look at how that character's kind of set up and how all the controls function um, and we'll look at um, some of the things that you can adjust and can't adjust so that you don't accidentally break the, the, the rig or the controls. And uh, we'll also uh, then in later videos actually go through the process of animating the character. Now this uh, uh, is going to be more of an overview. Um, I'm not going to do an entire animation uh, because basically it's more or less the same techniques over and over and over again. So I'll, um, I'll start the animation off and then essentially you can use those techniques for your own line of uh, dialogue. Um, because everybody's going to have a different line of dialogue, it's kind of just about pointless me actually animating the entire sequence. So I'm going to show you how it works and what the processes are and you can just apply those uh, techniques and processes to your own characters. So let's uh, open the file and we'll uh, take a look at the setup. So the first thing we want to do is uh, set up our project folder. Now the project folder is uh, supplied. So if you haven't got a copy of that project folder from me, um, just let me know and I will uh, give you a copy. So what we need to do is set that project folder first of all. So we'll go to File. We'll go down to Set Project. And we'll select the project folder. And I've got it here on my desktop at the moment. Um, you guys probably could have it on an external hard drive or maybe even uh, on the student work directory on your computer at school. Uh, let's select that and hit the select folder button. Okay, so now what we can do is open the file. So we go back up to the file menu and we select open scene. And usually what that would do is take us directly through to the scenes folder. Um, I'm finding in Maya 2012 uh, that sometimes it doesn't actually take you directly into the folder. What it'll do is put you into the main project folder, in which case you've just got to go to scenes. And there's the file there. Uh, certificate 4, head sequence 1, rig 1. So this is uh, the starting point. So let's have a look. We'll open this up. So to begin with, we've got uh, the character mesh, which is uh, the, the model, the actual model itself, or the geometry for the model and that's uh, this thing here okay so you can see here we've got the head and the eyebrows are one piece and then the eyeballs are actually two little separate objects um, a little bit tricky to select with Maya sometimes uh, due to its general inaccuracy when you're trying to select things okay so there's essentially three objects here um, the eyebrows are actually um, separate pieces that were combined onto the head so it all selects as a one piece like that uh, we also have uh, a control over the head, which is this uh, little set of curved arrows, just here. And this is called the head control. Uh, we also have a little locator in front of the eyes, and this is the eye target control. Okay. Now you'll notice that there is uh, this kind of circular thing on top of his head. That's actually the joint in the middle of his head. Uh, and if I turn on my joint x-rays, just here, you can see that those joints, there's a few joints in the head there. We've got one down the bottom, one in the neck, one sort of near the sort of the base of the, the head, near the, the mouth, and another one up here at the top of the head. Um, now it's important that you don't change these or move them uh, or do anything to them. At the moment, they're actually locked, so you can't select them anyway. Um, and I'm going to explain how that's been done uh, in a moment. Uh, but just uh, for the time being, it's just important to not uh, really mess with those. Okay, um, so just to kind of make things a little easier to see, I'm going to turn my grid off because it does get a little bit annoying. 
Um, and we don't really need it for this. We're not doing any modeling, so it doesn't really matter if we've got a grid or not. All right, so let's kind of take a look at the basic uh, the basic setup for this. Uh, I'll show you where everything's kind of stored in the scene, and then what we can do is have a look at how these controls work. Um, so I'm just going to turn off my uh, X-ray for a second. Okay, and we'll pop over here to the channel box. Uh, so we've got the channel box at the top half here, and then the layer uh, panel down here. So you can see I've got this tab just at the side with those uh, names. So we've got several layers, okay, and these are display layers, which you can see here from the uh, the tab. Uh, obviously, we've got uh, render layers, and we've also got animation layers, but we've, we're not going to be using any of those. We're just looking at display layers. All right, so the first one is mesh, and we've got this little V for visibility. And if I click on that, you can see that the visibility of the mesh turns off. So the mesh is the model, okay? Um, so basically, the, uh, the head model is actually inside this layer and I can turn it on and off like that. Uh, the next layer down is the joints. Okay, uh, I'll turn my joint x-ray back on for a second. Okay, so the joint layer has the basic rig inside it. Okay, like that. So when I turn that off, you'll see the joints disappear. Now, you'll also notice that the two eyeballs disappeared and the controller that was sitting in front of the face has disappeared as well, this little thing here. Now the reason for that is that these three objects are parented onto this head joint, okay? And the parent command is over here under the edit menu, just down here. Uh, so Maya basically treats those as being part of the the joint uh, hierarchy or the joint chain. So when I added them into this layer, it also added the the eyeballs and the controller as well, um, which isn't really an issue, okay? Um, but that's just kind of explaining why they disappear with the rest of the joints. Okay, um, I could put any object I wanted in here. I've just named this layer joints. Okay, um, it's just the way that it works. Uh, so the next one is rig controls, and if I turn those off, you can see that uh, they both switch off. Um, now the fact that the little uh, control here, the eye target control, also is inside this layer. Um, you'll notice that basically you can have, uh, Maya sometimes has, does this weird thing where you end up with one object that's actually assigned to two different layers. Okay, um, so that can happen. So I can kind of hide both of them like that, or turn off the, um, the joints and hide those. Uh, the next one down is uh, the hidden rig controls. Okay, now if I turn those on, we get two little locators appearing here and here next to the eye target. Um, now these basically are just in here uh, for the actual eyes to um, uh, kind of point at. So uh, basically each of the eyeballs points at one of these little black uh, locators and those two locators are connected onto this yellow one in the middle. So when we move this middle locator the other two follow that around and the eyes will rotate around to point at those two targets. Um, but we really only need the middle one visible, which is why that layer has been turned off to hide those two extra locators. Uh, the final one is the blend shape layer. And this one's probably um, one of the more interesting ones. So I'm just going to zoom out here for a second and I'll turn this blend shapes layer on. Okay. So the blend shapes layer holds a copy uh, or several copies of the original model, but each copy has been modified slightly using um, more or less just the move tool um, or variations on it. Uh, and each of these, these duplicates has a different facial expression. Now this is uh, what we use to create the blend shapes. So for example, um, you can see here that this first duplicate has its right eye closed, like a wink. The next one has the left eye closed. Okay. Then we have, uh, the next one has the eyebrows up in kind of a surprised position. And then the next one has the eyebrows positioned down. And then we have um, some mouth shapes. So we've got uh, lips kind of pressed together. And then we've got 
Um, so this, this expression here would be the sound of an M or a B. Uh, and then we've got the next one along here, which would be this, uh, this is the, the face, uh, the facial expression you would get for the letter F or the letter V and so on down the line. Uh, then we've got individual eyebrows, you know, we've got a smile, we've got a frown. Um, and uh, these two here are actually, this one here has its ears raised up slightly, and this one here has the ears raised or lowered down, I should say. Um, so that when the character talks, we can get his ears to wiggle a little bit. If you watch people when they're speaking closely, um, first of all, they'll probably think you're a little weird. Um, but you'll also notice that uh, their ears will move slightly when they speak um, and other sections of their face might move as well. Things like the, the nose, uh, like the nostrils might flare a little bit and, and so on. So um, when you're setting up your characters, if you take those little extra movements into consideration, you can add a lot more personality and life to your characters. Um, this is a really basic character and we've put a little bit of thought into that, um, but we're not really worried too much about it. Um, as this is really just a little introductory look at how this system works. So let's just uh, kind of cover a little bit um, about what this actually does. So each of these heads has been relinked back to the original using the blend shape tool. Um, if you're interested in looking at how that's set up, um, you could probably find a bit of reference for it online. Uh, this is it's sort of a little bit beyond the scope of this project, but essentially it's a system that lets us change the shape of this rigged head into any other of these shapes. We can also blend them together. So, for example, we might have this eyebrow position mixed with this mouth position, for example. So you can actually mix them all together. So it's really, really important that you don't mess with any of these heads at all. And that's why they've been placed in a layer by themselves and switched off, okay? If you change any of these heads, it will actually change the way that this head operates and it will change the way that those uh, expressions work. So if you play around with these, you may potentially break the rig and the head won't work anymore. Okay, so you can turn off the blend shapes layer all right, and um, if you're concerned about maybe accidentally doing anything to that layer, you can switch the layers mode to either template by clicking on this little button here, a T or an R, which is reference. Both template and reference modes for layer lock the layer so you can't change them, okay? Um, a reference layer will render uh, even though it's locked Whereas a template layer, even if the object is visible, won't render, okay, and it's still locked. So um, that's what those buttons do. So you've got visibility, and then you've got kind of a layer mode, whether it's reference, template, or normal, okay. Um, be aware, I found on the Mac, Mac systems, in particular, uh, the MacBook um, uh, laptops and stuff, they actually don't display these properly and sometimes you'll click on one of these and it'll remain blank um, but it'll actually be locked off as like a reference layer and sometimes when you click them you'll get the little R showing up but it's actually unlocked so just be aware if you're using um, any kind of um, Macintosh notebook that you may actually have display errors occurring in this panel um, I've, I've had uh, several instances where that's been the case on different Mac uh, notebooks. All right, um, so let's have a look at how these controls function for a second. So I'm just gonna select my head again and press F to center it, and I'll turn off the, um, the X-ray. So the first, uh, the, the most basic control is the eye target. Okay, so if we select that and have a look up here in the uh, channel box, okay, you can see here all we've got here is translate X and Y. There is a translate Z, but it's locked and you can't do anything to that, okay? And essentially all what this means is all we can do is move it up and down or side to side. So if we grab the move tool, we can drag that around like this and the eyes will follow it, okay? So we can keyframe the position of this or animate the position of this to make our character look around. 